In this presentation, we are going to look at simulation uh, simulations, which is numerical computing with uh, uh, Python, NumPy. So essentially, random number uh, calculations with NumPy. And what we're going to do here is look at a, the counting problem. So I'll start off with the most uh, commonly encountered counting problem, and it's called the birthday paradox. And the question is, how many people must a group contain in order for there to be a better than 50% chance that two members of the group will share the same birthday? And in this, we we'll just sort of uh, base it on the probability, uh, uh, base it on the assumption that all d uh, dates of birth are equally uh, probable. That's actually not exactly true. Uh, Christmas, there's a you're less likely to be born on Christmas because it might they just uh, I'll save that for another time. Anyway. How many? How uh, many would suppose that the answer is just half of the number of days in the year, or roughly 183? Okay, but that is, if you put a bit more thought into it, you'd sort of say, well, actually, that's not what we were asking. That's the correct answer to a different question. How many people do you need to have a uh, at a party for there to be a 50 better than even chance, or better than 50/50 chance that one of them will share your birthday? Okay, so it doesn't actually say which pair of people in the group. Okay, so if you want to be specific, oh, it's your uh, birthday, then you know it's 183. But if it's no, you're not being so uh, strict about it. Uh, then it is well. Actually, I'll just cut to the chase here. The answer is you only need 23 people. So if you have 23 people in a room, the chances of them uh, of two of them sharing the same birthday is actually greater than 50-50 okay and even if you have like let's say about 70 or 80 people the chances of two people sharing a birthday uh, rockets up to about 90 I'm not quite sure what it is but anyway that's the counting problem now a bit more of a fun example uh, you can actually look at that later on but actually I'll go straight to this one here a few years ago uh, Canadian lottery officials learned the importance of counting the counting problem the hard way when they decided to give money back from their unclaimed uh, prize fund so they give back some unclaimed prize money that they was accumulated so what they did is okay there's enough here to buy 500 cars so we're going to make them f uh, bonus prizes and what we'll do is program a computer determine the winners uh, so 500 randomly selected five number 500 numbers from the list of 2.4 million subscriber numbers okay so pick out 2.4 million numbers, just pick out 500 and that will do the job and then find out who is correspond to each number and then just send them the car. So they published this in a um, they published this unsorted list of 500 winning numbers and promising an automobile for each number listed. Now what happens is that some guy said, pointed out, I've actually won two cars. My number came up twice. So with over two point uh, with over two million numbers to choose from, how could a number have randomly uh, selected the same number twice? That sounds almost impossible, but it's actually it's not. Uh, when pulling out a number, it takes more than um, a, uh, it takes when pulling out uh, from a pool of two point four million, as well, as well, what was going on here, it takes more than five hundred numbers for there to be a great and even chance of a repeat, a duplication. Okay, but if there are 500 numbers and you're randomly selecting 500 numbers from 2.4 million, there's still a chance that the same number might get selected again. Okay, and so uh, it, this is what they call sampling with uh, uh, with replacement. That if you pick a number, it sort of can be picked again. Okay, it's so. Um, what happened is that they actually asked him to give his car back, but he said no. Fair enough. Now, what I'm going to do here is actually, I'll tell you what, I'll just move straight away now to the IPython notebook I'm doing this on. And quickly what we're going to do is actually just sort of pick, just to sort of warm us up, I'm going to use the rand int uh, command here. So, import numpy as np, np random rand int. Now, this will select, um, what I'm going to do here is like uh, select uh, 15 uh, integers. Between, oh, sorry, 10 integers between, let's say, 0 and 15. Okay, so that means 0 can be uh, uh, 
picked, but uh, 15 won't be picked. So any number between 0... Essentially, the, the, the values will be here between 0 and 14, okay? Uh, because I've specified 15 as the upper limit here, that means the highest possible outcome is 14. It's just a wee bit confusing. You notice here that actually, uh, now this is a very sort of small example, but it's just to identify this idea of sampling without replacement. 14 actually got selected here in the fifth draw, but it was got uh, selected here on the sixth draw again. Now that's because there's only we're picking uh, uh, equally each draw is equally likely, and you know there's nothing to um, essentially. In fact, zero got picked twice, eleven got picked twice, fourteen got picked twice. You know this is what they call sampling uh, with replacement. That once a number has been um, selected, it can be selected again at later draws. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is uh, make this much bigger. So I am going to pick out, let's pick a, I'll just take it nice and small for a second. And what I'm going to do here is actually, I'll even make it smaller again. From um, 0 to 999, put in the 0 there, it's the default setting, but I might as well put it in. We're going to pick out 10 numbers. So uh, let's run that and see what happens. Okay, those 10 numbers between 0 and 999, 1000 will not actually be picked, but 999 will be picked. Okay, it's easy enough. Now, what I'm going to do is call that sample. Okay. And that's just apply the name sample. And to find out how, like this is the length command, which is tell, just tell you how many values are in it. L E N. Simple enough that there's ten there. Now what I'm going to do also is actually print out the unique values here. So if there is a duplication, let's say, uh, the duplicates won't be printed. Okay. Now in this case, the they will not be any duplicates because it's quite a large data set so we pick out the original 10 now I'm going to change this down to uh, from 0 to 20 I'm going to change that down and I'm going to pick 10 values from that sorry I'll do that here okay and we'll print out our sample and we'll also print out the length of the sample Print is just a sort of command you so that uh, if you're printing out multiple things uh, from the same cell in IPython notebooks or Jupyter notebooks, just handy command. So let's run this game. We're going to pick uh, ten integers between zero and twenty. Okay, and let's run that. There we go. Now you'll notice that has there been any duplicates there? Actually, there hasn't. None that I can spot. Oh, no, sorry, there we go. 12 and 12. Okay. So, uh, that's the length of the sample. So, that's the sample there, and that there's 10 values in it. Now, the unique command will uh, just print out the unique values here. So, let's just update that with our new sample values. And you notice there that there's only, it, it's, they come in ascending order. Okay and also no duplicates okay so let's print out the length of that and that is len of the np there we go so there are actually eight values. Actually, there must have been a second duplicate. I just didn't spot there. I was just uh, trying to scan through it very quickly. Um, so, there are eight unique values out of the ten. Okay. So, if there is a duplicate, in the case of duplicates, this is the not equal to sign, exclamation mark equals. And if there is a duplicate, this uh, statement here will be true. So true 
if duplicates present. So let's run that. Now, so we know in this case that there is going to be, so it's true. Okay. Uh, we can also integerize that to give us an outcome of 1 uh, for this particular example. So if it's true, we just turn it into an integer for 1. This is handy for a for loop problem. Okay. Now, let's sort of expand this up. Make, let's make this much bigger. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have a second sample and I'm going to call it SAMP2. Okay. And what we're going to do here is pick 500 numbers between 0 and 100,000, okay? I'm just sort of scaling the problem down a bit, okay? And, but essentially, you know, uh, just make, you can make that 2.4 million if you want. But it just, I'm just, for the sake of time, it's already in 11th minute now. I'm going to uh, turn that down a bit, just to make it speed things up. So, is there any uh, duplicates present, okay? So let's run this, and if there is a duplicate present, we're going to get a 1 here. Okay. There is a duplicate present. Let's just run it again. Uh, oops, gone too far there. Let's just run it again and see if there is another duplicate present. Oh, actually, there is. So there is a duplicate present. Uh, in this sample too. Now, I've just run it again and there's no duplicate present. So, essentially there's going to be either, if there is a duplicate present, there's going to be a 1. If there's no duplicate present, there's going to be a 0. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we can run this experiment here and what we're going to do here is define a function. Okay, now it's going to have an input here and that's how many values uh, so it's essentially how many values there are going to be. We can uh, how how big is the pool? Okay, so previously it was like a hundred thousand, and uh, how many? What's the, the size of the sample that we're drawing from? So this is the sample size. This is the popula or the population size? This is the sample size. This is the sample that you're drawing from. Uh, drawing uh, you're drawing from this population, and what this will done it will do. Uh, what this uh, def de um, will do is it will check to see if there are any duplicates and if there are du any duplicates in your sample 2 it will uh, return the answer 1 otherwise it will return the answer 0 so it's just a sort of turning into a function what I have used already there we go now what we're going to do here is we are going to run this and we are going to have, let's say, 100,000 is going to be our population size. The sample size here is going to be 500. And what we're going to do here is run this uh, experiment. This is a for loop. And I'm going to just change it to zero. And just so this is just a general for loop here. Uh, the count variable, we're going to run this experiment. Uh, 10,000 times. The count variable is just to count up how many times we there was a duplicate. Okay, and so let's run that. And let's hope that works. This is going to take ages. Okay, so at the end of the experiment, th that actually was quite quick. So there was 100. Uh, sorry, 10,000 experiments. Okay. And as it turns out, that there was actually quite a 71% of the time there was a duplicate. Okay, so that actually that's quite high. Let's just uh, scale this up again, actually, make it a little bit bigger. So it's, what is it now? So it's 500 is the sample, and we're drawing from a million. Any chance of duplicates there? And let's actually, for the sake of brevity, I'll actually just re reduce the number of experiments. So let's just run that again. So uh, when I, out of uh, one million people or one million uh, items, uh, when you're uh, drawing a sample of 500 and there's so there is, uh, there's no sampling uh, with replacement, or you, you have sampling uh, with replacement, uh, you're uh, picking 500 people when sampling with replacement from a pool of 
one million that there's a roughly 10% chance that you will actually get selected twice uh, actually you know what let's actually run the experiment again let's lock that back up to uh, uh, 10,000 these uh, 12% uh, 12 seeing as it's quite quick I'll actually knock it up one more to 100,000 uh, simulations that's going to take a while but I think it's worth it because we're sort of converging on a number about 10% and yeah it's actually quite uh, close to 11 uh, percent for that's when you have it for 1 million people actually let's run the experiment precisely as the Canadian experiment is now it, by the way they, I'm just just a sort of there's a little uh, bit of the uh, with the rand int command it's just a little bit tricky as how, how, how it works uh, but correctly I should have 2.4 million and uh, 2.4 million and one there we have it there uh, when you're picking from um, the 511 times out of how many so it's about half a percent okay according to this let's run it one more time So there's a half percent chance that yeah again yeah, pretty consistent. There's a half percent chance that uh, if you're picking 500 numbers sampling with re uh, with replacement from 2.4 million. Oh hey, that's 24 million. Sorry, I'm just a uh, little bit. Uh, I'll try to sort of concentrate on my recording as well. Anyway. I think you get the idea anyway. It's just like what, so you can sort of play around with this and sort of say what's the probability you get a count in twice. I think I've sort of made my point actually. I'm going to wrap it up now. So there you go. Yeah, that's right. That should be about 5%, uh, which is what I was thinking. So I just to sort of put in an extra zero there in the any duplicate command. Let's just do it one more time for a bit of crack and just sort of see if it comes out about 5%. 5% will r r roughly be 5,000 and something. It's there we go. Uh, you see that it's actually consistently coming out at about five thousand out of a hundred thousand. Do you know what? It's sort of jamming up now, so I'm going to leave it. Uh, the record is said uh, is very heavy on recording the uh, software, so I'll leave it there. All right, that's the Canadian lottery problem, and also the birthday problem, which is also quite simple. I'll just leave it as a little afterthought. There we are, about five thousand again. All right, that's enough of that. Bye bye.